Hello guys, this is Rani and this is a new tutorial. Today we are going to start a new series of tutorial, a very exciting project. Uh, I just thought about this yesterday and said, why not? Let's try this in the group. It's a good idea. So let me tell you about it. So you know how sometimes uh, inventors, they want to know how things are built or they want to know how things work. So in order to get there, they would, they would just take one thing and break it down to its like individual pieces, right? They will just tear it apart and see how it's been built. So I thought, why don't we uh, apply this strategy to graphic design? Why don't we find interesting pieces of design that we found uh, well done, beautiful, and just break it down, dissect these designs to their most individual parts and see if we can put them back together to recreate this beautiful design. Uh, with Canva. So we will do everything with Canva. All the technical part will be done with Canva. Maybe we'll find uh, some visuals outside of Canva, like Google, using Google or different, uh, I don't know, stock images. But uh, everything will be made in Canva. So no Photoshop, no uh, anything else. Um, all right. So I don't know if we will be able to recreate everything, every single piece of design we come across with Canva. Uh, we'll see. I don't have the answer to this. And also another thing, I want you guys to suggest some designs that you find well done. And maybe you wonder, oh, how can I possibly recreate this in Canva? So I accept the challenge. And those of you guys who want to join me in and be the inventors trying to reproduce the designs, you're welcome to do so. I mean, I don't have to be the only one doing this in the group, but I understand uh, it requires a certain expertise of Canva. So I'll take on the challenge. Uh, whoever wants to join in, feel free. Uh, I'm really happy if you do. But uh, what I want to say is, yes, you, you guys also can uh, suggest some designs that we will try to recreate in this group. Uh, I think I have time to take one of these, take on one of these projects per week. So don't expect me to do this every day because it takes time. But um, yeah, I'm happy to do it at least once a week. So that being said, let's, uh, let's start with today's design. So yesterday I stumbled across one particular design that I found well done. Uh, let me show it to you. It's here on my desktop somewhere. Yeah, here. There, that's the design. So I really like this design. It, ca it caught my attention, caught my eyes. Why? Because I think these, um, these overlays are quite trendy nowadays. We see them a lot. Maybe uh, you're, you're a Spotify user. You've maybe noticed that they use a lot of color overlays. Um, and, and it's just, sorry, and it's just uh, a nice way of catching people's attention. It's a high contrast. So if we dissect this design, what can we see? There is a white background. So that's the, the base layer, I would say. And then on top of it, there is this rectangle which contains my photo but it seems to be a, a colored overlay on top of it. It might be a gradient, might be a, a plain colored shape. And then we have two shapes, like these two rectangles, with some text on top of it. And because the, the frame right here doesn't cover the whole visual, we have this framing effect um, around my, my photo. And this, we can see that the, the frame, it would have been better if we could have had like a even uh, even edges, so this one is larger than this one, so the vertical edges are larger than the horizontal edges. So we'll see if we can correct that, maybe not. Um, so let's go ahead and reproduce this in Canva, very exciting. Okay, Canva right here. So first, the aspect ratio. So what kind of document is this? It's, in my opinion, it's a mix between the presentation document, which is 1920 by 1080, but that's not quite the same measurement because otherwise this one would be longer and not as high. Um, it looks like the, the other presentation document. So uh, let me let me show you this one. But this one 1024 by 768 is a little bit short. So I think this is an A4 document in landscape mode. So basically this one document. Let's try. Let's open this one. All right. Now we have. Our blank document looks kind of the same aspect ratio. We'll go, we'll go ahead and use this. First thing we need is a shape, um, not a shape, sorry. We need a frame where we will put our photo in. So let's type in frame. 
we can type in frames or we can go and in the element section frames it's the same thing so I'm, I'm here right now and I'm looking for some kind of frame with the same aspect ratio as this document so I would say this this one okay need to make it bigger let's see centered and we have the same problem as this the creator of the other visual right here that you see the top and bottom uh, edges are slightly narrower than the side edges or oh, actually we have the opposite effect but this is due to the fact that my shape my um, frame right here is not exactly the same aspect ratio as my document if it was then we would have had like really even edges which have been cooler but uh, well that's that's what we can do so far there's no other simple way mm, I would say to create these this framing effect the other way would be to use some lines or some shapes and to create it manually which we could do but it's um, it's not as perfect I would say as using this so we'll go ahead and use this okay next thing I need is well a photo a photo similar to this one we don't need to find the exact same photo that's not the point of the exercise but the idea is to find a photo of a building this looks like a European city maybe Paris or maybe Barcelona or something like this it has this nice uh, clear section here where there is no not much going on in the photo and this creates this nice luminous section in our design which is right on top of our um, title here so it kind of brings uh, the focus like your eye is naturally appealed to this section of the design right here I would say which is good because it's the beginning of the title so people usually read left to right so if your eye is attracted here then it's a good sign because people will go directly to this section of the, the visual where you want to bring them so let's try to find a visual with this clear section as well so to do this we will search in Canva yeah and I didn't mention but I am using my free Canva account Oop, sorry what did I do yeah I, I am using my free Canva account so this is not Canva for work I do have Canva for work but for the sake of these tutorials I want to use the free account so that most of you uh, can not most of you all of you can follow these tutorials and uh, you don't have the excuse oh but I don't have Canva for work this is not for me which uh, which is fine all right let's go ahead and find this photo so I can just use my search box here and find a photo of Paris maybe I just type in Paris I guess I'll have a bunch of Eiffel Towers showing up uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't really see what I need yeah so let's try something different oh, maybe this one let me see this it has the nice sky okay let's use this why not so I just drag and drop this into my frame like this this is not bad and then next step is to create this overlay to put on top of my photo so there are a couple of ways of doing this this I'm not sure if this is a gradient like a slight gradient or simply a, a, like a, a full colored shape with no gradient in it just a plain colored shape with some transparency of course so let's see let's try with gradients so I just type in gradients I'll find different gradients and this one looks like kind of like the similar color um, you know guys what I can do is I will import the visual we are trying to recreate in a second page here so we can compare them without having to switch from one tab to the other all the time there okay something like this all right so uh, <clears throat> what I was yeah I was looking for my uh, overlay my gradient so I could use this one let's see what happens yeah we can see uh, this might be might be it might be the thing we are looking for let's see if I well you see if I move it around then it it kind of enters my frame and my photo seemed to have disappeared so that's not what I want I just go go undo so this is not the proper way of using a gradient let me show you the proper way of using a gradient you need to select 
that frame with the photo inside and duplicate this. So I just do this. You see, I have two of these frames and I just drop my gradient in one of them. Okay, so now what I need is some transparency. Okay, so one thing I can do also is to make this bigger and, and move it around to find like a nicer, softer kind of gradient, not that much contrast into my gradient, not going from one color to another color, which is very different, but more subtle kind of gradient. And I think I can even go bigger than this. Yes, let's try this. Okay, zoom back in. Okay, so I just position this gradient on top of my photo. Yes, looks nice. And now I need to give it some transparency. Okay. So, yeah, one thing I can see is that it's not exactly, we don't get to this, the same result. It's not as vivid. Uh, the, this color of my overlay is not as vivid as what I can get here. So one way of improving this. First, maybe this gradient is not the right shape. Maybe it's not what I'm looking for, because if I leave it, give it less transparency, then I don't see my photo anymore. So maybe the gradient is not the best thing. Uh, maybe what I need is um, a plain shape. So let's try. Let's just delete this um, frame. Let's just go for a plain shape. Okay, shape. I go for this plain shape. Okay, now I need to cover exactly my photo. Okay, like this. And I would just use my color wheel to find a purpose which is similar to this. So this, yeah, oh yeah. To bring this. Okay, so let's see what happens if we use this value right here and of course give it some transparency. This is already better, much better than the gradient. So I'll work with this. Mm, maybe less transparency. Okay, let's, let's work with this. But now the second thing we need to do is work on the photo itself. Okay, because this photo is not contrasty enough to, to create these strong shadows that you can see in this one visual. So let's work on it. So of that photo right here with the filters that Canva let me use so that we have something similar to this result right here. So we could use the drama effect. We could use the epic. We could even go like grayscale and use the street effect and even, even push it further with more contrast. Let's see what happens with more contrast, maybe more vignette. Yes, and see if this makes a difference in our design. So like this. This is pretty neat. This uh, starts to resemble this one visual a lot, actually. So what I can do is try something even different, okay? I have this colored shape right here. What I could try is to duplicate this one again. Okay, now I have two. And change the color of this one for black. Change the transparency to something lighter, maybe 30%. It's 31, it's fine. <laughs> and then just push it back so it's right on top of my visual, my photo, but it's not, um, yes, now it's back, it's on top of my photo like this. So I think this is pretty good. The contrast of this photo could be higher, but I think this also might depend on the original photo, right? Um, the original photo was not very contrasty, maybe not as contrasty as this one. There's not much I can do about this. I already improved the contrast quite a lot. So I would say this is good enough. Now we can finish the visual by uh, creating these boxes. And let's go ahead and do this. So that's, uh, no, that's not a background, sorry. It's a shape. Okay, this shape. 
just create random shape for now. We will change the color afterwards and we'll just type in our text. Just trying to see the dimensions. It's actually a bit longer. Yeah, and center, of course. Okay, now I need to find the right font. So what is this font? Because I'm using Canva quite a lot, I can, I can recognize this font. Uh, it's a long font, it's a tall font, and it's all caps, not much uh, distance between the letters. So I'll go ahead and browse through my fonts and find it, basically. So first I need to create a new title. I will center it, and I will put this in white. Okay, then I need to put it all caps, and I will type in my text. Um, so we already have it. Barcelona is. Then I just need to find the right font, right? And because, yeah, I told you I kind of knew what the font was because I'm using it quite a lot. So I'll just go straight to it. But if you don't know what your font is, um, you have to kind of look at it visually and find it here. There are actually, so the font is Lee Gothic. Right, so I'm just going to use the League Gothic, make this bigger, all right, center it. It looks nice in black as well, but I will reproduce this color for the sake of this exercise. Um, reduce the size of these boxes and center these two elements, good. One thing I want to show you is how can I reproduce exactly this color? Okay, one thing that I think is crucially missing in Canva is a color picker. So this little uh, eyedropper right here that allows me to basically select any color of a given visual, right? That would be awesome if Canva had something like this. It doesn't. So this that you see right here, it's an extension that I'm using. I'm using Chrome. Uh, so it's a Chrome extension. It's called Eyedropper. So if you go to the Chrome extension store, and it's free, huh? don't, don't uh, get me wrong, uh, you don't have to pay for this, it's free. Uh, you can find this extension, you can install it. I'm pretty sure you can find the same extensions on Safari or on, um, on uh, Firefox. It depends on the browser you're using. But me, I'm using Chrome, I have this eyedropper uh, extension right here, and I'm using this all the time for my design. So I really recommend you, you grab one of these until Canva uh, incorporates this into, into the app, which I believe they will probably do for the, the next update. So uh, that being said, I'm going to use it, show you how it works. So pick a color. Wait, sorry, I need to scroll down on my design first. Okay, pick a color. I just pick this color, go here, and this is my color, which is pretty convenient. I can now copy this and go back to Canva, create a new color, and paste this hex code to have my exact color. Awesome. See how this is uh, taking form? So next thing, I need to create the second text box. So to do this, I will select my text box here. For this, I click outside of my design, select it. Of course, these layers are selected as well. So I will hold shift and click until they are deselected. Now only this, these two elements, the text box and the text are selected. I will group them and I will copy them. Canva has this tendency of changing the font color, kind of like a bug, but it's all right. Uh, so this and then I will reduce the size to achieve the same kind of results. Maybe a little bit bigger, like this. I will center this like this, all right. And I will work on this text, ungroup. I will change this to white. And of course, insert the text I want. Don't want Barcelona is a second time. Barcelona, Barcelona is waiting, exclamation point. Yes, so one thing I want to show you, and this is a common mistake I've seen people doing in the group. Uh, I explained this in the course, but uh, I don't think I have ever, ever mentioned it in the free tutorials in this group. But if you want to correctly center 
your text, for example, with another element, you need to snip this box to its shortest form possible. So that means right before it snaps into a second line, right? So go all the way down, make it snap to the second line and then go back there. This is what you want because Canva, if you want to center this piece on, in, in this design, Canva will not consider your word, it will consider the length of this box. So make sure it is in its shortest possible form so that it centers your design right in the middle of the, where it should be, right? And the same with this one, make it shorter. Then I will select both of them again using the same technique, make sure it is centered and this one needs to be centered as well. So there, I think this is fine. Let's, let's look at the result. Uh, this is pretty good, actually. Uh, this is pretty much what I was looking for. Um, yeah, so I think we've done a pretty good job with this visual. The, the, the color, that's one, one of my regrets with this visual. I was not a, quite able to reproduce this intense color. I'm guessing there might be a vignette on top of everything else, but Canva doesn't have these blank vignettes. Uh, so I would have to find, let's try, let's see if we can do it. Vignette. In images. Mm -mm -mm. Yep. Um, and I need PNG. That PNG. Yeah, 1920 by... It's not quite the dimensions of my document, but we could try. Let's go ahead and see this. If it's really a PNG, yeah, it looks like it. I'll try this. I will save this, save image. Okay, let's try. I'm not sure this is going to work, but it's worth trying. Import this into Canva. Oh, it's here. Put it here. Guys, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I want to try it because this is what this series of tutorial is all about. Try, deconstruct, dissect and see if you can make it work. That's how you will become a better designer. Oh, look at this. So I need this to whoop. OK, this is looking pretty nice. Uh, Yes, but one thing I need to do is put this in a frame, right? So let's create another frame. Or we can go find this frame right here, copy this, drop my vignette inside of it. No, uh, first I need to delete what's inside yes and now I'll drop this is it even possible no all right so I have to do this the hard way there so this would work let's see Yeah, this is nice, but the problem is it's not the same size as my photo, as my boxes, and I cannot include this in a box, in a frame. So I guess this is the way to go, but we would have to find a vignette with the exact same dimension. So I'm just going to delete it for now because this is not working, but you get the idea. Uh, we've been, yeah, the last thing I wanted to do is to center this in the middle of our design. So I'll just grab everything and yes, center this. This one seems to be a little bit lower actually. So we'll push it down a little bit. Not that much like this. Okay, this makes it uh, for today, this, this is it. We have done our best to reproduce this design. I would say it's pretty cool. 
uh, we understood how this has been um, achieved, this like deep color with another layer on top of this, which is a vignette. We didn't find the right vignette. We tried, it would require more searching to get to this result. It is possible, so I encourage you to find them. Or if you find a vignette that you, you think you can use, uh, just make sure to create your visual at the same dimension of this vignette. So this vignette, um, I don't have the dimensions right here, but if you look the dimension, if you search for the dimension of this one document, just create a similar document right here, and, and that's how you do it. I hope you learned from this tutorial. I encourage you to, uh, to share some visuals you would like me to reproduce. Uh, I would like also the most courageous of you guys to join me in this uh, challenge to reproduce designs. Uh, that could be nice if you create a little tutorial that you put in the group for the most advanced users in this group. I know some of you are pretty advanced, so go ahead, just jump. Uh, don't be shy. I don't have to be the only teacher in this group. So that would be nice. Okay, I hope you guys learned from this tutorial. It's quite long. Uh, I hope you like it. If you do, uh, share it or give me a like comment on it and don't hesitate to find some other designs that you wonder how is this possible how was this made i will be happy to help thank you guys